year, one in four children in America will experience food insecurity. Uh, and now you may have seen me uh, post this, post about this, but I'm, I'm going to actually uh, repeat it because it, it really moved me. On Christmas Eve, I was talking to Noah. He's one of the organizers on this Feed That Neighbor program. He just gotten off a of food uh, or gotten off the phone with a food pantry in in New Orleans. Hey guys, uh, it's it's one of the pantries that are, uh, that your donations are going to support. And he said that he said this. He said that parents are coming in. Many of them have never used a food pantry, nor have they ever thought they would need to use a food pantry. And they're coming in. They're getting food for their kids, and they want what we all want. They want their kids to feel like everything is okay. And he said that about after three, four days, those same parents come back and they come back and they tell him that they haven't eaten, that they've given all the food to their kids. And that's happening in America today. It really, it really shook me. And I imagine you feel the same. So tonight... Tonight we're going to have fun, we're going to tell jokes, we're going to talk to celebrities, we're going to give thanks to the end of this damn year 2020, but we're not going to forget why we're here. And we're here because with your help, we can enter 2021 with the hopes that it will be better. <laughs> Special shout out to all this, all this New Year gear. Um, I do want to say that it's covered in glitter, so Cheryl, that's Cheryl Lowe, Rob's wife, um... Actually, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm conflicted. Should I tell them about the glitter or should I let her find the glitter uh, <laughs> in his office? Because you know what glitter is. Yeah, it's stripper DNA. Um, this is an unprecedented Instagram live for charity. You'll notice there's a donate button down there. Wow, we've already gotten $1,200 so far. Thank you so much. Um, check out that donate button. This is the first of its kind Instagram live for charity with the donate button. We're trying it out. It's certainly not the last time this format will be used moving forward. They'll probably call it, uh, the Chris Pratt model, but it's whatever. Listen, um, we're getting a lot of traffic. We're probably going to crash this site. And if that's, if that's the, the case, I just, I just want to say, Hey, listen, um, I'm just going to start it up again. And so be patient uh, and, and just join back up with me. Now, now, you know, click the donate button at the bottom of your screen. 100% of every single dollar raised so far and through tonight goes to meals and operational support for food banks. 100% of your dollar, including credit card fees, go right to helping those in need. Currently, we've raised over $530,000 and counting. What's great about these donations that are coming in right now, 2200 so far, is that the first 10000 are going to be matched by a greater good board member who, who wished to remain anonymous. Bless their heart. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be shouting out some of the donors as the donations come in. So if, if you want to shout out during the broadcast, donate. And the bigger, the better. One last little technical thing before we get into the fun. Uh, it's important that you please log into this broadcast via uh, Instagram, if possible. I, I know you might be here via Facebook. It kind of becomes a pain in the ass if you want to donate. So please, if you can, log in using your Instagram. That way I can see your donations. They'll come in real time. And uh, you'll get that shout out. You know what I'm saying? So we've got 140 donations so far. Unbelievable. $2,800. That's amazing. Let's keep them coming. People, I love you. When you click to donate, it'll take you away for a second. I'm still going to be here. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, we'll just, you know, go make sure you're set. Like I said, this whole thing is free. You don't have to pay a dollar. And if you don't have a dollar, that's fine. Sit back and enjoy the show. Of course, if you do feel compelled to make a donation, just click it. If something makes you laugh, click it. If something makes you cry, click it. If I mispronounce a word, click it. It'll be like a drinking game. We've all gotten pretty good at those over the last year. <laughs> What's that? A live studio audience? Unbelievable. Uh, since I am the host, I've never hosted anything like this before. I'm going to do a monologue, okay? Uh, with actual jokes. Be like Ricky Gervais or... Amy Poehler, when they do the award shows. Normally, you do something like this in front of a big crowd of people wearing tuxedos, beautiful gowns at some place fancy like the Beverly Hilton or Four Seasons or even Four Seasons Total Landscaping, which I hear is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see, the jokes have started. Uh, remember, click to donate if you like them. 
because uh, I can't hear you laugh. And the upside is I can't hear you say, you suck, either. So here I am doing a, wow, 4700 bucks donated so far. So awesome. Um, what do you think? You know, there's always a lot of talk about who is America's favorite Chris. And normally I don't care much. Uh, but this year it determines who gets the vaccine first. <laughs> Oh, classic vaccine joke during a pandemic. I guess what I'm saying is don't forget to vote for your favorite, Chris. I'm not sure how this works. But anyways, I think we should leave all that in 2020. (laughs) You're right. You're right. Uh, Before we get started, though, uh, let's just take a moment to reflect back. Reflect back on on all just of the wonderful things that have happened in 2020. I'm done. (laughs) Good. Oh. Okay. Wow. You guys really like that one. Okay. More jokes about bad things that happen. Uh, you know, listen, a lot of people recognize me from the Guardians movies. Uh, sometimes people recognize me from Jurassic World. Um, there are also times I'm recognized from Parks and Rec, and that's when I know it's time to get back in the gym. Stop. You know. <laughs> okay. Enough. Okay, now you're kind of, I feel like you're laughing at me. People ask me a lot of times how I lost all the weight to go from Andy in Parks and Rec to Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Well, unfortunately, Guardians was filmed first, so it's actually a sad story. Uh, People also ask how I keep the weight off. How about having Arnold Schwarzenegger as my father-in-law? Any idea how that feels? He basically invented bodybuilding. So it was either stay in shape or film a twins reboot with him. (laughs) Yeah, I'd be Danny DeVito. He'd be Arnold because... Anyways. Um, Listen, my uh, my darling wife uh, and I had a baby girl this year. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Mostly because we very quickly ran out of other things to do. We're not puzzle people. (laughs) So, uh, as a dad, I'm required to make the following dad joke about the pandemic. Uh, Working from home sucks, but you can't beat the commute. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God, you guys are a great audience. Thank you. Uh, Click the donate button if that made you laugh. Um, Or if you made that joke during quarantine. Come on, you know you did, dads. Pay up. We're at $7,700. That's freaking awesome. Okay, so um, anyways, this is actually odd. I, I... Many of you know, I got my, my big break on a TV show about, uh, about government, a government agency called Parks and Recreation. And then my big kind of movie break was, was a film called Guardians of the Galaxy. And I thought, now, there's no way that will ever be a government agency. But now we have a space force. And the soldiers will be called Guardians. That whole sentence is true. And... It because it kind of makes me think that all of the movies I've done will somehow become government agencies. Like they're going to send uh, troops into you battle on the back. Of, whoa, uh oh, technical difficulty here. Hold you on. You are Chris Pratt. Don't let them tell you. Hold on otherwise. a second. I think you are strong. Hold on a you're smart. You are fit. This is stupid. You are Chris Pratt. I got. I hit it. I'm honey. I think I turned on you a... You are so fast at running. This is bad. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, you are tall. I put on a voice... How do I turn off voice you memos? very good grades in high school. I got... You are Chris Pratt. Honey, my voice memos are bleeding through the Don't get production. down, Chris. This is life. This is me. The lion that lives inside of you. Do not concern yourself oh, with the thoughts of those people. Drink and hate a raid, Chris Stop. Pratt. Oh, my... Uh, hold on a second. You visit hospitals. Chris. I do. It's true. Stop. You are nice. Uh, hold on. How am I going to do this? People trust you. Chris. Okay, they should. Eye of the Tiger, bro. Stop what you're doing right now and play Eye of the I Tiger. I can't stop you know what I'm doing right now, Chris. Fires you up. I know that song fires me up, but I can't stop what I'm doing right now. 
Believe in yourself. You can achieve your dreams. Okay. All right. Oh, there we go. You ever had that happen? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> huh. Someone makes a $100 donation right now. I'll tell you what happens in Guardians 3. Waiting. It's at 8882-8892-8892. Do you want to know what happens in Guardians 3? 8924. They go to space. Totally got a hundred dollars from that guy. Uh, look, I love being in the Marvel universe. Um, this is actually the first year since two thousand nine that there wasn't a Marvel movie. So, kind of to put that in perspective, uh, Tom Holland in two thousand nine wasn't old enough to see a Marvel movie, and here we are waiting for the ball to drop at midnight. And in two thousand nine, Tom Holland was waiting for his balls. It, I'm just going to let you finish that joke by yourself. Okay. Oh, boy. Good. Here's some more jokes about my career. <laughs> uh, the loneliness of quarantine has been hard on people. It really has. Uh, a few years back, I made a movie called Passengers, where I played an astronaut trapped on a huge spaceship with Jennifer Lawrence. And this quarantine is kind of like being in the theater showing that movie. <laughs> Get it? You'd be alone. Because <laughs> no one saw it. <clears throat> I do realize how fortunate I am. Um, this year, I also uh, realized that I picked a job where you succeed by measuring how many people you can cram into a dark room for two hours. <laughs> how could I have known that would be the worst thing you could ever do? But, um, look, I think we're all very happy that 2020 is ending. Still a few hours left, so plenty of time for one more awful thing to happen. Ugh, at some point during the countdown, we're going to find out the vaccine makes your dong fall off. Uh, seriously, though, if that does happen, still take it. Just take it. Um, it is New Year's Eve. I hope, uh, I hope everyone got their New Year's kiss ready. You better not have. It's a virus going around. But unless you live with a person, I really don't want you even shaking hands at midnight. Um, I'll tell you what. How about I be your safe, socially distant midnight kiss? Huh? You ready, baby? Ooh, what's up, girl? Or guy whose name I definitely know. Did you, uh, did you do something with your hair? Uh, or lack thereof? <gasps> Either way, it looks great, and uh, you know my favorite color is blonde, or brown, red, auburn, mis miscellaneous. Oh, wow. Look at the time. It's almost midnight. Perhaps we could kiss, and then after, you could tell me about the girl at work who's so annoying and probably just jealous of all of your accomplishments. Anyway, Happy New Year. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Wow, 10 grand raised so far. That's awesome. Okay, uh, my next guest, my first guest, I should say, not my next guest. Um, where are we? There we go. Um, so he's an Oscar winning actor, he's a Grammy winning musician, he's a hilarious comedian. He's a television host. He's a girl dad. There is nothing the man cannot do. In fact, it's actually my mission to find one thing that he's bad at. He's, he's, he's so many good imp impressions. I wonder, though, if he can do a Chris impression. He's been Ray Charles. He'll be Mike Tyson. I've personally been loving his shit since In Living Color. Please welcome Mr. Jamie Foxx. What's up, baby? Yo, how you doing, man? You got me over here cracking up, man. You got me <laughs> cracking up, Chris. Hey, man, I'm doing, I'm doing great, man. You know, I'm a big fan. Listen, you know, you know, one of my little classic favorites to watch is Wanted. Oh, ew, 
Yeah, that's some old. Yes. Yes. Wanted. Just about you, you, you know, slow, slow, bro. I said, ooh, that dude right there got it right there. And now, <laughs> and now you can't walk in the mall, bro. You can't walk in the mall. <laughs> oh, Jamie, that's so nice. Well, dude, I just, I just said I've been loving in you since, since In Living Color, man. You have been killing the game for so long. And, I mean, what, what haven't you done? What haven't you won? You know, you are – you're so good. You're doing Mike Tyson next, right? Mike Tyson, how we boxing champion of the world? Just Mike Tyson, how we boxing? <laughs> oh we do. We do Mike Tyson, and you know what's you know what's crazy about that, Chris, is that I met Mike Tyson when I first started out. Whoa. First started out, I'm doing stand up comedy in L.A. I'm burning up the club. This is back when it was gunslinger time. You know what I'm Whoa. saying? It was yeah. Okay. And it was people like Eddie Murphy on stage, Robin Williams, Jim oh. Carrey, young Chris Rock, uh, uh, early Adam Sandler. How you, how you guys doing for us? All these guys, right? So I'm oh. burning up, right? And at one point, I'm, I'm doing this hood club, right? And I get to my Mike Tyson joke, which is my go-to, right? Stop. And I get to it, and nobody laughs. Nobody laughed. You know why? Because Mike is in the audience. Not a good sign. So a dude, and this is back when Mike was knocking people out for just smiling the wrong way. So a dude yelled out, he said, yo, Mike is in here. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then this little black girl was sitting in the front. She was like, what you going to do, Jamie? You going to tell your little joke? I'm like, chill, right? So next thing you know, uh, the dude yelled out, he said, Mike said, do the joke. No. That shit better be funny. So everybody went from looking to him, looking to me. I do the joke. I get a standing ovation after he comes up after it. He's like, there you are, you crazy man. Come here, come here. Let me talk to you for a second. And I started hanging out with Mike. Now that was, man, like 89, 90. And now to be on the verge of capturing him and a different mic, you know, doing yeah. like as opposed to the high energy we're gonna capture the mic when i said i called him not too long ago i said mike how you doing i'll praise i'll praise the god my brother i'm just happy that's why you're happy because i don't have any money anymore i don't have any vultures i don't have anybody trying to take things from me i said that's who we got to capture so we've been on uh we've been on that grind man and i cannot wait for uh for the world to see it whoa so what's the process been like for you i mean obviously there's there's the there's the spiritual transformation the sound now, but there's also a look and then an aesthetic, not only physically, but with the movement in his body boxing. Have you been in the gym a bunch, like working on that stuff? Yeah, been in the gym and everything like that. But here's the thing. You know, like I know, when we're doing a, a, a story like this, it's not necessarily necessarily about what you see in the ring, but it's right. about what you don't see, how he orders his food, how he talks to his kids. Like I told Mike, wow. with the transformation, like I gained – this is quietly. I gained to like, I was 226 pounds. Whoa. When I was like just doing some test shoots. And I said, Mike, I'm going to look so much like you. I'm going to walk into your house and your kids are going to open and, and say, Dad's home. So wow. it's a matter of getting that. And then it's just the spirit. You know, it's just like how, yeah. uh, you know, doing Ray Charles. Hey, you know what? I'm going to make it do what it do, baby. So it's yeah. sort of uh, waiting on that spirit to sort of like settle in. And then you go from there. Wow. That's, some, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Um, so speaking of Ray Charles, you, you're from a real musical family. Your whole family is, is music, right? I mean, like, yeah. I, I saw, I, I, I was seeing on your, on, on your Instagram, is it Annalise, your daughter? Annalise? Yeah, daughter Annalise. Yeah, yeah. She, Annalise, is she, how, she's 12? She's 12 years old. Dude. She's been playing, uh, and so we're all musical, but to watch her like pick up the piano and start playing, you know, man, I'm just over there like trying not to blow it. You know how you're a proud dad, but if you're too, if you're too overbearing, they're like, you know, stop. But she's really great at it. And you know, like this, Chris, you know, as fathers, we're like, man, you know, you always want your kid to find the passion. And when they find it in your lane, you don't want to push too hard, but you want to push just enough. But the fact that she loves it, man, we were in the studio, uh, we were in the studio last night. Cause we have the studio here at the crib and she was showing her beats like she's doing beats now so oh, yo really? check so she was like dad don't let nobody don't tell nobody it's my beats i just want to see how they move to it and it's crazy so now to see that she's got that bug man it just means everything <clears throat> and she can hoop she what and she can hoop she's five oh is that right my daughter yeah. is five nine candace parker sent me a video of her daughter duncan on like a seven, seven or eight foot rim. I got a video of my daughter dunking on like a seven and a half, uh, eight foot rim. 
and she's 5'9". The last game she had before COVID, she had 21 points, like 12 rebounds, six blocks, like crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's so – is there – I mean, honestly, there's nothing that make. I, I love – I love being a parent. I love yeah. it. There's nothing that – I'm going to get you – I'm going to get you this. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Give me that. one of those. The good dad I'm game, I'm wearing man. that right now. Yeah, I wanna, man. Yeah. Um, so you got Soul out right now, uh, Disney Plus, Soul, Pixar. <laughs> there he is. That's what's up. <laughs> man, you know Joe Gardner, say. man. Listen, we are so happy about this movie, man. Everybody who has seen the film yes. just says it was the right film for this year. You know, we've gone through so much, and I know I've gone through so much in my yeah. family, and I give so many... Uh, thanks to people that know that I, I, I you know, I lost my sister and, yeah. and, and things like that, you know. But it's to 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 have this movie come out and to touch people the way it touches people, man. If you haven't seen it, man, please get a chance to check it out, man. It, it, it's a it's a great Pixar uh, Disney film, but that heart of the story, man, really moves people. I cannot tell you how many people have called and just been like, man, I'm in tears, you know, watching this film. So uh, if you get a chance, check it out. Yeah, I, I, I most certainly will. I, ha I haven't seen it yet. I, I was rehearsing this, and I was like, man, Jamie, I got it so good. I, I just love Soul, but I, I haven't seen it. So, but, but, I, <laughs> but I tell you what, it's on Disney+, Plus, and we're going to watch it because, you know, I'm, my son is eight, and we, anytime there's a movie that comes out that we can watch together that we both are going to love, I, I, we watch it. So I think we're going to watch it tonight. You're going to do it. You're going to love it, man. And Tina Fey, Quest Love, it's dope, man. It, it's it's just like really, it's music, it's jazz in there. So I think you have a great time watching it, bro. That's dope. Hey, listen, uh, 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 before we go, first of all, people, I'm looking down. We've raised $12,500 since we've been on here. That's pretty cool. Um, looking back Congrats. this year, I, we all come to appreciate the blessings in our life, right? Yeah. There's so many right now going through unimaginably hard time as we're here on behalf yeah. of Feed Thy Neighbor. It's a fantastic cause, but I also want to give an opportunity for you to shine a light on the cause that's dear to your heart. Uh, you mentioned that DeAndra Dixon Foundation. Yeah, man, my, my, my sister, you know, she was an ambassador for Global Down Syndrome. Uh, she passed this year, but she did so much, man. Like, literally, when Quincy Jones saw her dancing in my music video and the, the, the Down Syndrome community saw her, uh, Michelle Sees and Kim Andrews, you know, reached out. She was the ambassador for about almost 10 years, man, so... Global down. Make sure if you if you got a chance, you don't even have to give money, man. Just put your put your eyes on it because I know it's a tough time for people right now. So any money, and I congratulate you, man, on raising uh twelve thousand, and I'm gonna donate as well, man, oh, thanks, gonna, man, because it's it's up to us, man. But I appreciate you. Uh, but global down syndrome. Uh, make sure you you know just go ch check it out. And like I said, you don't have to give money, but just be aware of what it is. It's some beautiful people. We miss her. Her spirit is alive. And for everybody out there, man, all I can tell you is that Chris, I watch you, man. I I, I appreciate what you do. And this is what I tell people right now for two two thousand twenty one. Look for the good in people. Yeah. So many days we just look for what's going on, what's our differences, what's bad with that. We ain't got time for that, man. Look for the good in people in 2021. And I guarantee you, if you practice that of looking for the good in people, no matter what they think, I guarantee you will be in a better place, man. And thank you for doing what you're doing, baby. And Brother, keep thank you. I, that is so beautiful. I, I, I will. And I encourage everybody else to do the same. Looking for the good. I love that, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Fox. Thank you so thank much you, for being on with me, man. I appreciate All right. it. All right, All baby. Right. Take care. Happy New Year. Wow. Jamie Fox. Can you believe that? And check out Soul streaming on Disney Plus right now. How good is that? How good is fucking Tyson going to be? I'm pumped about that, man. I'm pumped about that. All right. Um, I'm going to go right into my next guest. Right into my next guest. She is amazing. Uh, she's a brilliant actor, writer, director, producer, you know her from Rocket Man, as you like it, Black Mirror. Her documentary, Dads, was out right now, and it's gorgeous. Uh, she returns to direct the second season of The Mandalorian. She is my co-star in Jurassic World and relies heavily on me to remember her lines. Uh, we just wrapped Jurassic World Dominion, and I'm going to see if she'll spill the details on any spoilers so I can't technically get in trouble. Please welcome my dear friend who has... An extraordinary new look. That's Bryce Thank Dallas you. House. I rely heavily 
totally on you to remember my lines? Yes, that's let's. I'm I'm glad you said it. That's I'm our glad story. You said it. If yeah. it weren't for me, would you really know what we're doing that day? No, no way. I'm just really in the present, you know? Like, I like to be spontaneous. You know this about me, Chris. Yeah, oh yeah, completely spontaneous. Although, the, I will say the hair seems spontaneous, but I remember you talking about it, so you knew exactly what you were gonna do when you, when you did your hair. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I planned this for years. I haven't, I haven't dyed my hair since I started the first movie in our franchise, because yeah. I was like, oh, Claire's like, natural she's like a natural person and right. so i didn't dye my hair and then the day after we finished the third movie i was like yes so <laughs> yeah well i love it i think it looks really good i, I think it looks you. really good thank so thank you, you for buddy. joining uh with me here we are for feed thy neighbor uh we're just gonna have a conversation if you're interested in this conversation if anything about this or any of the movies that we've done together have inspired you i invite you guys to donate um and let's talk so 2020 it was a trying year Mm -hmm. um, what were some of your silver linings in this bleak well, year? I mean, I think for us, and, and, and you might feel similarly, it's, it was so extraordinary to be able to not only have a job that right. you know, we were able to, to go back to work safely, but um, during the time that we were working, we were all in a bubble together. And so mm -hmm. it was really like a little family for many months, you know, over four months. Yeah. And, um, and I think that that's, you know, we, we, we didn't take that time for granted because we knew the fact that we were a community and that we could be together and we could eat together and laugh together and all of that safely was something that, you know, we were a very small, um, we were a very small group of people who had this privilege that kind of like yeah. no one else in the world did. You're, yeah, you're so right. You're absolutely right. It was it's a massive undertaking to be able to pull off business in the midst of this pandemic and keep everybody safe. I mean, there's no guarantees, but we came about as close as you can come to having a guarantee. And when you have that much money on the line and that much, that many people working together, they're really strict protocols you have to follow. And we did, we followed them and God, we were blessed to be able to get to work through the course of this. Not everyone is so lucky. And, um, yeah, we, we were lucky, but uh, and we have, we have incredible memories too, you know, like, it's oh, yeah. like Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, like playing the piano Yo, and singing together. Yeah. Remember? And Laura Dern just being the most charismatic person on the planet. <laughs> DeWanda Wise just making the best damn food you could ever eat in your Yo, life. Like it's yeah. just, it, it was so, it, it was just, it was, it was nourishing. It was a deeply nourishing experience. So it was well, definitely give the audience, a audience. Give the audience now, give the people watching now uh, what they really want. Because obviously you know that I can't reveal any spoilers, but I tricked you into coming on so that uh, I could make you reveal all of the juicy details. So spill the gut. Yeah, and that's like, that's kind of like my, like, that's my mojo. Like, I'm one of those people that's just like, oh my gosh, I might slip and just like tell all these spoilers. So I'm just going to like go for it and just yes. be myself, right? Great. Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens in um, Jurassic World 3, which could also be called Jurassic Park 6 um, yeah, yeah. and Jurassic World Dominion. Um, yeah. Here's what happened. So in the first movie and the second movie, mm -hmm. Chris and I, we play these characters, Claire and Owen, and they have this relationship that's sort of like, are they or aren't they? Right. Um, for the first movie, for the second movie. In fact, there wasn't even, like it's so much, are they or aren't they? There weren't kisses written in, in right. the script for the first movie. And there were no kisses written in the script for the second movie, but we found ways to work them in because we're, we're romantic and we love these characters and you know it's like we're we're invested in it and so we got the script for the third movie and spoiler there's a lot of kissing there's so there much is. kissing between there claire is. and owen That's and right. i was so excited because i love that relationship coming to fruition you know and then COVID hit right <laughs> and the prospect of kissing your co-star it i mean it just the stakes got really high. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then, and so then we did the bubble thing and we're right. like, okay. And then we're sort of like negotiating. Maybe we can like trim down the kisses and all of that. And then we feel safe because we've been in this bubble for a while. And, and you, um, you, you had a steak that you cooked that you were super, super, super excited about, Chris. And you ate that whole steak and then you got a tummy ache, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Jamie, our chef. I do all my What's My Snack videos. Jamie makes all that food. And he knew that on Fridays, I would really have a big cheat meal and I would, I would eat steak. And so he got me like a 56-ounce 
bone in ribeye steak. And, uh, oh, I ate the entire thing. I ate 56 ounces of beef on, in one day and, and was very sick for about a week. And so because and of it was sickness, the week of our kissing scene. Yeah. I and thought, you got a fever. I got a fever from, <laughs> I had a beef fever. You know, a lot of people talk about the beef fever. I had that beef fever and, uh, yeah. and it was, it was not good on my tum tums. And here I was like, Oh, I have a, I had a hundred degree temperature. And I thought, well, this is not right because if you have a hundred degree temperature, you're not supposed to go to work. And I got all these tests. I didn't have the COVID, but I had the beef fever and we kissed. And you know what? <laughs> the glad. good news is, the good news <laughs> is, is that his fever had subsided by the time we kissed. We did have to shuffle around the shooting a little bit. And more than yeah. anything, the best news is, is that people can know to expect when they see me and Chris kiss on screen, they're not just seeing like, you know, two actors who are really invested in their characters and being present. They're seeing two people who are master technicians at covering the other person's, you know, like double chin yes. and like love handles. We, we know. have complimentary sides. Yes, right? we have like complimentary compliment, best we, sides. You know, people, yeah. especially Instagram, Facebook people, we always know which side of our face looks better. You know, that's not my favorite side, but right there. And do you see there. how it's complimentary? Yeah. See, so when we, when, anytime you see us in a scene. I'm on Chris's it, right side. Yeah, we always, or we, we, it's a vanity move. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and then so, when you kiss, like, I'll, like, hold the chin. You'll hold the chin. We watch out for each other with the monitor. What's yeah. our term if we notice that there's something happening? What's our term? <laughs> a what dolphin. We say? dolphin. We, say, we say dolphin. Yeah. If, we, if we know dolphin. that someone needs to stick their chin out, because yeah. that doesn't look good. Dolphin. Well, it's not good or bad, but, you know. We're going to choose oh, to go I forward. Yeah, yeah. It's not good or bad, <laughs> but aesthetically more pleasing. And for our characters. For our characters. Our characters for, don't have yeah. double chins. Yeah, for the consistency of the aesthetic. Because it's, yeah. it's been years since We've we started. We've established it. So tell me a little bit, Bryce, about um, what you're doing uh, at NYU. And tell everyone what you're doing at NYU. You're, you're yes. teaching a, a course and a seminar at NYU. Yeah, yeah. I teach a class at NYU um, at, at Tisch. And it's a class actually for folks who are typically, um, they're actors or they're designers. They're not like, they're not writers or directors or, or traditionally like makers in their own right. Um, and so it's a class for, for actors and designers who who might be inclined to write, to direct, to produce. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like a filmmaking course in a way uh, for, yes. for actors, essentially. Because when I went to Tisch, I felt a little like, oh man, I wanna be, I love doing theater, but I wanna be making movies as well. And I wanna be able to know how to generate my own work. And right. um, because it's kind of tough as an actor to wait to be hired. In, in fact, it's not even tough as an actor, like it's impossible. If you wait to be hired, you will not succeed. Like you have right. to generate a lot of your own work. You really, really, really do. And that yeah. hustle can, can look like a lot of different things for different people. But oftentimes we don't give ourselves permission to create our own work until someone else deems it worthy. And so right. this class is sort of like, you're worthy, now create. And it's really fun. And you, you came to the class, you've been hugely supportive since I've started. And you came to the class and you offered, I actually, I brought, um, um, uh, I had uh, Dewanda Wise and Alana Miller and Laura Dern came to the class and you heard about it. And you were like, I, you know, I can, like, I, I'd love to come to your class. And I want to see what college students. looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to know. Great. It was great. It was awesome. Listen, I, I loved it. All such earnest, amazing artists and, and great kids. And I loved it. It was, it was really fun. Uh, and I'm, I'm just proud of you. It's awesome to see you're, you achieving so much uh, beyond just being a great mom and a great wife and a great scene partner and a great actor. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're creating, you're producing, you're directing The Mandalorian. You're just mm -hmm. like, you know, you are, you've got your claws in this business and you you know it's amazing you, you you're not letting go and and the business is better for it so i want to say thank you for joining me thanks on my man i love you you're the best chris and wow. i'm proud of you and i adore you i adore you oh, i miss you all right well i'll probably call you right after this anyway yeah. <laughs> Tell the and the kids I say yeah hello. so fun and definitely check out soul oh my gosh it's 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 an important movie and awesome. a healing movie. It really, really, really is. That's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. All right, sweetheart. All right, okay. Bryce.
Good night. <laughs> All right. Mwah. Love you. Mwah. Bye. All right. Going to do that. Remove it. There you go. And Bryce Dallas Howard. Isn't that nice? Um, so listen, let's do a quick donation shout out. Three. Wait. I don't know how to read this. We've raised $13,658 out of 500. That's $570,000 total. $570,000 total. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I'll give a, a quick shout out to some of our uh, fundraising people here. Oh, man, this is awesome. $10, $11, $50, $100. I'm seeing most of these donations come in for 10 bucks, and that means the world to me. It's five bucks. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We got, uh, we got NW Photo Video, $10. We got uh, Kaylin Kiabanao, $10. We got, look at this, Iden Redding, $10. So many, so many uh, wonderful donations. I, I'm, I'm really thankful. And if you broke, there's someone said, Richie Spanish, 87, you're broke. Get, I get it, man, brother. I've been broke. And, and no worries. I just appreciate you being here and, and telling your friends about it and sharing it and being part of this. Uh, it's really exciting. So that's amazing. Now, listen, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, we just heard, obviously, from, oh, there was a $5,000 donor match from a guy named Tim Coonan. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, we just obviously got off with Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, I just, I, it makes me miss my Jurassic World family so much. Uh, my Jurassic World Dominion cast. You know, people will ask you if, if you hang out with cast members uh, in real life. Like, does the cast hang out? Are you really friends? We were, and we, we are. And because we're so close, uh, the cast agreed to send in some quick hellos to support Feed Thy Neighbor. That's how much they love and respect me <clears throat> and adore me. So let's see if I can pull this up here. That is not it. Terrible. First technical difficulty. I'm going to try to find this video. Stand by. I've got an amazing video. I'm doing all my tech stuff myself. It's all good. Um, let's see where the videos are. There we go. Here we go. Oh, boom, boom. That's good. Uh, oh, there we go. Stand by. Here we go. Let's see if this works. How do I turn this sucker around? Now a message from the non-dinosaur cast. Here we go. Yes. Uh, happiest New Year to everybody. Hello, all. Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Samuel. Happy New Year. Good evening and happy holidays and happy New Year. I'm very proud to be here to support Feed Thy Neighbor. Um, this is uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Familiar. I've been asked by Chris Pratt yeah. to, um, to join your telethon this year. Hey, so my good friend Chris Palaha is... It's Pratt! Palaha. Chris Pratt. Which one's Chris Pratt? Seriously? Jack Spratt. Oh, my God. Pratt? Oh, yeah, yeah. Short, short guy. From what? Gardeners of the Galaxy. I don't think I, I don't think I saw it. Um, uh, Chris Pratt. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful fellow. Anyway, thank oh, you. He's Jurassic. Yes. Oh yeah. Nice. Don't remember. I'm <laughs> so grateful to say hello to everybody and to be part of my dearest friend, amazing Chris Pratt's telethon for Feed Thy Neighbor. There's some hey, stuck to the script in America. Believe it or not, one. Out of every four kids, may not know where their next meal is coming from. Ay, ay, ay. So please, please click to donate. Be a hero. Thank Let's you. Let's all be heroes together. Thank you, Laura. Let's join in. What? Huh? No, that's. No, I, I have it right here. He wrote it for me. Just read whatever. I'm very proud to be here to support Feed Thy Neighbor, a Thank wonderful you. organization as a member of the Jurassic World family. Nice. The need is real. Click the link below. Oh, I, whoops. Nate, be a hero. Every bit counts. Thanks yeah. so much. Feed thy neighbor is incredibly important to charity. Be a hero and click today. Yes, and again, I want to thank Chris from the bottom of my heart for being the greatest leading man 
any girl could ever ask for. So incredible at stunts. Taught me everything. Everything I know about acting. Yep. No, it, I'm I'm reading it, but he said to say, yeah, no, 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 I'm getting that. So there you go. Help Chris Pratt with the telethon today. I'm kidding. I love him. Oh, I love and you. thanks <laughs> to our other co-stars, Jeff Goodblum and Sam Rockwell for joining in this telethon too. But let's not forget number one, Chris, our hero. Join him in being a hero too. I, I honestly don't remember any of them, but I mean, I'm glad the guy's doing this and I'm so happy to be part of it. They'll cut that out. No, they'll, they'll, they'll cut that part. Out. Oh, incredible. Incredible. Wow. Wow, truly, truly incredible. My friends, they come together and they help me out. Wasn't that, let's give them a, can we just, can we just give them a round of applause? Thank you, my friends. Thank you to my wonderful friends who uh, respect me and, and read exactly what I wrote uh, for them. So I'm, I'm bringing on another guest. He's a very special guest. I know you guys are excited. Uh, to have this guest come on. Um, he does it all. He is a Tony nominee. Super funny. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, most likely he can juggle. Uh, you know him from the series Chuck. You've seen him in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, both of which I auditioned for and did not get. Uh, Big Mama's House 2. And on to top it off, he is now a full-fledged M effing superhero and truly one of the greatest guys in Hollywood and I mean that uh, he's he's amazing please welcome my dear friend himself Shazam and when the rock says that the hierarchy of the DC universe has been shifted he's talking about Zach Levi oh! <laughs> up, happy new year brother happy new year hold on yeah, yeah. That's how that's doing, how you Al? ring in the new year with a horn of some kind. Uh, yeah, it's a Google horn. It's a glitter horn. A, fl a, fl a flugel horn? A flugel horn. I got to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it would be good for. There's like early on in my monologue, I do a joke about whiskey, and so I brought. I had Catherine bring me some whiskey. I don't really drink that much, and I'm have had this much of the whiskey, and I blackout drunk. You're Black feeling out. yourself. Yeah, I'm feeling you it. You are straight feeling yourself. Listen, if any night was to be the night for you to feel yourself, tonight's the night. That's the night, baby. Tonight's the night. Thank, uh, you. thank so you. Thank you so much for having me. By the way, thank you so much for uh, being such a rock star of an individual and for using your platform over and over and over and over again to shine a light on people that need help and need to be loved. And you're doing that tonight right now. So I'm very grateful for you. And I'm very grateful that you included me in your festivities. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. Thank you, man. Thank you. I mean, yeah. it. I mean I, it. You're I, a good I egg, Charlie. Like, uh, you've, you've always uh, been a leader in that way uh, as well. And I, I, I've always appreciated how you've represented yourself and been authentic to who you are and Thanks, man. i remember seeing something early on when twitter was very first started to do a thing you just answered very you just said i believe that prayer is very powerful and you said that on twitter and i was like that's cool because i believe <laughs> the same damn thing and yeah. you know not a lot of people say that and you yeah. can get kind of dragged for saying that kind of thing but if you believe it you believe it you know yeah I and think which, people, I, yeah, I think, I think, uh, unfortunately, you can get dragged for almost anything you say nowadays, yeah. because people are looking for an opportunity to jump and they, uh, there's not enough patience, there's not enough grace, there's not enough yeah. uh, compassion and empathy. And, and I think yeah. that the more we can step out and be ourselves, authentic selves, uh, and do that bravely, and do it kindly, then if people do try to come at us, then, uh, hopefully all of that that you know light shines on that and and we are still able to uh you know be the example that we ought to be so uh so cheers i i appreciate that and i again i i, I think that um you know everybody in our world we all well literally everyone has a platform 
whether your yeah. your platform speaks to 20 people or 20 million people and right. um i just think that it's really awesome that you continue to use your platform for good and like helping people because you know we need more of it so bless you man how's the I, night going by the way what's going on with rob Lowe's uh naked uh self and children behind you <laughs> what you bro they told me i could have my dream office i said you know what i'm hanging behind me the picture of rollo look at bro oh man it's so it's just i mean the, he ju he's First he just he's he doesn't age he's a vampire i don't know what's going on with him these are his amazing kids that's johnny and matthew this is rollo uh, Catherine and I are house sitting for him right now. So I was. Oh, no this, kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing it in his office and I realize I'm broadcasting. <laughs> there. Perfect. Pretty Perfect. sweet pecs. Uh, behind. Look, it's all for it's all for feed thy neighbor. Yeah, you know, feed right. thy neighbor, peck me. Um, that's right. We've raised 15 grand since we've been on. That's good. I'm Congratulations. Happy with that. Thank um, you, everybody, for your donations. Everybody out there who's still watching, who's donated, you guys are rock stars. You're helping yeah. people that you don't even know. It's one of the most beautiful things in the world. Act in love, act in love, act in love, act in love, 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 love. Hundred percent, so man. That's 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 really nice. I, I like to think I, 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 you know, I, I was thinking about like, like, if you if you donate on here, right? If you donate a five dollars, that equates to a hundred meals. A dollar, five dollars is a hundred meals. Ten meals or twenty meals. It's one or the other. It's either fifty meals or a hundred meals. Anyways, it's a ton of meals. Still, that's I don't a know lot. The exact math and math math is not my strong suit, but. If you if you make that donation, you you don't necessarily just know like you might not know who you're helping, but you will know that you're helping somebody, and I swear you will feel it. You'll feel oh, yeah. it, and that connection oh, yeah. between you and the people you're helping is real, and it's yeah, invisible. Yeah. It's like a thread that that connects you to somebody that you've helped. Yeah. And what's nice about that, in my opinion, is we need a lot of thread right now because the fabric of our society is being ripped from both yeah, sides being torn yeah, apart yeah so what's powerful about 690 people donating that's the number i care most about 690 people have made donations on this and we've raised almost you know half a mil over half a million dollars and there was something like eight thousand or nine thousand individual donations and to me that's that's the number like yeah. i'd rather see a hundred million people each donate a dollar than one guy donate a hundred million dollars yeah Either one would amen great, yeah obviously. absolutely but each of those donations is a thread connecting yourself in service to a person in need and that kind of thread is going to stitch back this country you watch you mark my words yeah. america is is a good country and it's and it's got good people and and you know we've got good hearts and it's the, it's always been the community that has made america i don't want i hate that maximum i don't even want to say it you know but yeah. it's it's what I got makes, you. Uh, it, this country yeah, exceptional. It, 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 it's the unfortunate thing. Uh, and again, I go back to it's the, it's the patience and the grace and the empathy that I think that we need to be um, practicing more. I think that yes. people on, um, on every side of any of these issues have a legitimate place in their heart, in their mind that they're coming from. Yeah. And we have to be able to be patient enough, even if we completely disagree with that person, to say, I'm willing to sit with you and hear you and hear your fears and hear your concerns and, and, and hear your heart and see where you're coming from. Because unfortunately, until we can practice that, we're just gonna continue to stand on our side of an opinion, on right. our side of a topic and never, never bridge that gap, never really try to, and, and that, you know, the, the empathy, I think, I mean, I, I think empathy is probably the, most important of all of those things and yeah. we just we we don't practice it enough we're not taught to and i think this is actually an incredible way to encourage people to do that because not only are you and we and you know uh, collectively um you know coming together tonight to talk about this stuff and it's important stuff and how many people are how many children are not eating right now and this pandemic has been crushing folks i mean it's there's so much crap to have to sift through and all of that we're, 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 we're bringing education to folks. We're shining a light on things. You are, you're raising so much money, but in doing so, you're also giving everybody who donates a little lesson in empathy, whether they recognize right. it or not, they're giving $5 and hopefully they're walking away going, Oh yeah, I'm giving that $5 because I actually can afford to give $5. There are people that I might completely disagree with politically or spiritually or whatever it is, but they can't yeah. put food in their mouth right. They can't feed their children right now. And that's yeah. not right. 
and the, so it's, it's it's a beautiful thing that you're doing man oh buddy well listen i'm so grateful to be able to do it uh with you and and like I said, with everyone who's involved, I mean, it's it's been a ton of people. Oh involved. yeah, you've been a lot of fun. Star-studded uh, New Year's Our Eve. Star-studded Instagramathon GTFO 2020. It's the it's, <laughs> they're saying it's the biggest ball drop event in history. I and mean, I, I heard Seacrest was just boiling with envy. Dude, he's so pissed right now. He's so angry right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, I got all these questions for you, but like the stuff that we're talking about is so much more important. But I'm going to ask some questions anyway. Yeah, ask some questions anyway. Let's see, see. Because honestly, there are fans out there that are really interested in hearing about Shazam 2. I know it's called Fury of the Gods. I'm one of those fans. See, sorry, I'm a fan girl. I loved it. It, it was that movie was so, dude. That Thank movie you, was brother. so good. Thank you. It was. It's kind like I love that DC got real funny and got like yeah. got cast you and did something really dope and, and, and different. You know, these things are always evolving. And it oh, yeah. from like Zack Snyder, kind of like moody and beautiful to something a little different. It's just like, I, yeah. I'm really happy with the direction that it went. And I'm really excited for Guns Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Wonder Woman yet, but I want I want to hear about, I want to hear as much as you can share. About, about Shazam 2. Uh, Shazam well, 2. Uh, as you know, um, <laughs> there's nothing I can share. Uh, because thank you. Everything's. Zach yeah. Levi, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you, you, there, all these things are under so much lock and key, and yeah. and also like a lot of it's above our pay grade. So, yeah. Uh, there, but but I can say that um, we're hopefully going to be going into production uh, soon this year, um, uh, or sorry, not this year, but but, but this is coming year, um, and. Um, you know, the the fury of the gods obviously indicates that there's some there's some uh, mythology. That we're, what's that? The gods are furious. The gods are furious. Yeah. I was really hoping they were going to call it Shazam Two Electric Boogaloo, but nobody they missed an went opportunity, with me on that. Bro. I mean, I I'm literally shoot you. lightning from my hands. How could it not be Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, you're shooting lightning uh, ideas from your hands uh, right now. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, um, but everybody's back. And um, yeah, the kids are all like adults now. It, we, we <laughs> by the time, they grow fast. and also because of COVID, like our our release date got pushed all the way to twenty twenty three. So I think some of the kids are going to be old enough to drink at the uh, at the premiere by the time the movie actually comes out, which is <laughs> a complete trip. Uh, but uh, no, it's it's great, man. I'm just I was so grateful. You know, I've I've we we you and I have talked uh, even before, and I've and I've done interviews before. Uh, and I also I, I noticed that you talked about you auditioned for Chuck and for Basil. Sorry about those. Uh, he also, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I was dying to play Star Lord and was camera testing for it. And then this schmucko comes in at the last second. He's like, "All right, I'll come do your movie for you," and completely blows it out of the water. So it was such a treat to be able to to transition uh, after you know, kind of feeling like, I don't, I don't know that there's a superhero role for me uh, left in the cards and then to, to land in Shazam and for it to be such a, a, a character with so much heart and joy and fun and, and uh, whimsy and all that. And yeah. uh, that we did well enough that people supported us enough that now we get to make a sequel, you know, I mean, that's like, these are, these are the, what, what dreams are made of. So it's, it's super uh, awesome that we get to keep making it. Well, I, listen, it, it, no one could have done it like you. It's, it's true. It's so great. It kind of had something like Tom Hanks had in Big, I think, like where Thanks, you've got man. an adult who's a kid because there's a purity mm -hmm. in you that was, is also in Tom Hanks that you bring to that role, that you buy you as, as a young kid. So Thanks, man. anyways, it's, it's beautiful, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the second one. Um, You've got all kinds of awesome projects coming up. You're going to be a, a, doing a biopic. You're going to play Kurt Warner. You've got yeah. something called The Mauritanian. Yeah, The Mauritanian is a really cool little uh, film uh, starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Jodie Foster. It's a true story about this um, gentleman um, who was uh, detained by the U.S. government, was uh, accused of being a part of the 9-11 conspiracy, uh, and unfounded and was put in Guantanamo for many, many years. And uh, w w which was his journey was injustice. And, and you find that out through the story uh, in the movie, but his character was incredible. And the amount of, again, going back to things like grace, the amount of grace and forgiveness that he showed his prison guards at Guantanamo, the, the people that treated him so poorly, the U S government even who was accusing him falsely, um, 
it's a very it's a it's a powerful piece and uh you know we're i'm we're always trying to find things that resonate with people that move people that are speaking something some kind of truth um and i thought that this was a really lovely uh thing to and they you know i, I play a supporting role to benedict cumberbatch but i was like cool man i mean i think he's great and uh, so awesome. we got to have some scenes together. And I think, I think you, you guys have obviously worked together in Avengers. And all oh, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Avengers, man. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's part of the team. Um, uh, Doc, I call him Doc. I call him Doc. It's cool. Call him Doc. You know. Yeah, you get it. Like you do. Uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, uh, when listen, is Tomorrow man, War coming? Or the uh, Tomorrow War, right? The Tomorrow War? Yeah, the Tomorrow War. When, it, when What's going on with that? I think uh, we've got a we've got a release. I mean, things are also up in the air with theatrical cool. stuff, so I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Open, I think we've got a release date in July that nice. we're holding on to. So okay. hopefully that'll hopefully uh, enough work. people get vaccinated by that point and we're yeah. up and running the theaters again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's kind of the that's the goal. And Yvonne Strahovski, who was in Chuck with you, is uh, a co-star. Uh, with me and she's so really glad awesome. you guys got to work together she's so she's great she's, she's great. great you're great zach thank you for coming on man it, me it means a lot we raised, bless you man we're, we're raised, anytime raised anytime. It in. anytime love you god bless you give my love to Catherine and the family and everybody and happy new year and we'll we'll catch you on the other side sounds good brother we'll talk to you All soon right, bye. Bye. bye bye how cool was that how cool was that awesome Awesome, awesome fella. Uh, okay, $18,398 so far, 839 donations. Wow, Dot Con Don, 100 bucks. Thank you, Dot Con Don. We've got, oh, Christina, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Found, Found, F O U N G, Christina Found, $200. Feel the Spirits, $100. Gregory McKnight, $100. Shanley Bryan, $100. Robe Cow, $100. Guys, that is a huge deal. You know that? That's a huge deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for making that donation. Thank yourself for making that donation. That's, that's really dope. And like I said, every single dollar, not a penny of this, despite what you see here, the, the insane production value, I'm doing it for free, if you could believe it. And uh, we're doing this whole thing uh, for free. So way to go. Congratulations uh, on, on raising so much money. Really, really thrilled for all of you. Um, so I'll just give a real quick background here. I was talking to my sister, Angie. She might be watching right now. I don't know. Um, and she, we're from a small town, 7,000 people. And um, she got this thing on Facebook, and it's called uh, Buy, the Buy Nothing Group. Buy Nothing. B-U-Y Nothing. And it's essentially just like a little online community of people where if you need something, you make a request. And if you have something extra laying around, an extra bed or a dresser you're going to throw out, you throw it on there. And the idea is like it's a, you, in, you swap things amongst your community. The buy nothing group. No one sells anything. No one buys anything. But you share things through Facebook. One of the positive things that has come out of this social media uh, era. And so, oh, Sarah Cool just matched $5,000, $580,000 now. Amazing. We're up to $580,000. Wow. So my sister's buying nothing group. She noticed that for Thanksgiving, there was a lot of people who did not have food for Thanksgiving. And she said, Chris, I'm, it's made her feel so good that people, she was matching people who had a little bit of extra food with people who didn't have food. She was making that connection for people. And it, for her, it fulfilled her soul. She's very active in her community, active in the AA and NA community. And um, it filled her soul, man. She felt so good about it. And it was really nice. Again, look, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. And uh, I'm proud to be from a family of service. My brother is a, uh, a, uh, a sergeant at Solano County Sheriff's Department. He's got a 501c3 nonprofit called Solano County uh, f first, first Responders. And, uh, and um, I, I was just really moved by, by my sister doing this thing. And I, I said, I want to sponsor a family. Help me sponsor a family. And, she, and so she she was going to help get back to me. And in the process, I started talking to my mother-in-law, Maria Schreiber, her whole family is, is, wow. I mean, talk about a family of service. They've, they've done so much in, in the line of service. And so I started talking to Maria. Maria got me in touch with um, Claire Bob Babineau Fontenot, who's, who's going to be coming up uh, uh, next. I'm, I'm going to introduce her uh, very shortly here. Um, she's the CEO of Feeding America, but but Maria said to me, you know, you got this platform, Chris. Why don't you use it and, and, and just interview Claire Babineau Fontenot. She's from Feeding America. She's a CEO. She's super awesome. She's like one of 108 
kids under one family. You heard that right, 108 kids. And, and, um, and so anyways, this is just my break in the program to thank my sister and my brother and my mother-in-law and the people in my life who have inspired me to use this platform because I'm feeling really good right now. And I promise it's not just the whiskey. Um, oh, Rob Lowe is trying to FaceTime me right now. I can't, Rob Lowe. I know I'm doing the FaceTime live. But can, does this work? If I FaceTimed and turn around, it opened a wormhole. I can't do it. Sorry, Rob. I love you. Um, so anyways, I, I'm going to introduce now a wonderful, a wonderful person. She is so cool. She's truly... Um, I'm going to try to find her. She's, she's, does she know she's coming on? I might have her name wrong here. I might have spelled it wrong. I'm not good at spelling names. B-A-B-I-N-E-A-U-X. Babino. Um, huh, I'm not seeing her. Maybe she could send me. If you're watching Ms. Babino, Fontenot, would you please, uh, uh, send a request? Oh boy. A lot of people, 448 requests. Okay. Um. You know what? Of course, I'm, she's at Feeding America. I am, there she is. I'm gonna send, okay. So I'm sending, I'm sending a request to her right now, but she's a rock star. She's got an amazing story. I, you probably already saw my Instagram live with her, but I just wanna, there she is. Hi, Claire. Hi, Chris, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How you doing? I'm awesome. That's, it's, it's so nice to see you uh, again, and thank you for all your hard work. You must've been so busy through the holidays. Uh, you're the CEO of Feeding America. And uh, tell us, how's, how's it going? Well, it's rough out there for lots of people. But I've got to tell you, you were talking about grace and gratitude. And you, you mentioned my last name, Babino Fontenot. And I'll, I'll throw out a term for you that I grew up with. Uh, it's a Creole term called lanya. Lanya. And it really is about grace. It's about giving people a little something extra, something they didn't deserve necessarily or earn necessarily. And I have felt so much Lanya. Um, I get the benefit of going out and seeing the impact of gifts like the ones from the people who are participating right now. Right. I get to be on the ground. I get to witness kids and elders and all of these family members, people who are out there who about 40% of the people who are turning to us for help right now have never before relied upon a charitable food system. Wow. We're seeing an increase of about 60% in need. We estimate about 50 million people may be food insecure um, by the end of this pandemic. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of suffering, but I gotta tell you, um, I'll bet on this country and people like you and the people who are, who are chiming in right now to do something about it. And we are, and it's really exciting. And it's the greatest gift of my life is that I get to take, uh, apart from being a wife and a mom and a daughter, um, but in my professional life, I've never had an opportunity to be a part of anything more important than this and more gratifying than this. Wow. And it's because of people like you. So thank oh. you. Oh, thank you. We, everyone, on behalf of everyone who's been part of this, there's, you know, 900 donations have come in since I started, but also uh, almost 9,000 have come in since I started the campaign. And each of those donations is an expression of gratitude to you and to your organization for what you do. It's, it's you know, you're putting... People don't realize how it works necessarily. I tried to break it down and I sure have been learning a lot myself, but just how a food bank and, and a food pantry and how they differ. And there's, it takes a lot of work, man. It takes a lot of manpower, a lot of volunteer time. It takes, you know, you guys coming up with the meals, finding the food, getting the maximum amount, amount of food for the value for the money. And then a whole slew of food pantries trying to stay mobile and solvent through a pandemic. It's, it's, it requires a lot and, and and really for the you know certainly right now and possibly the foreseeable future this is how a lot of people in our country are going to eat and and we just have to have have each other's backs and so i so. absolutely agree and you're talking about the network and maybe some people who are who are chiming in um aren't very familiar with how our network works so if i can take a second to talk yeah through. please do so we have a national organization of which i'm privileged to be the ceo and then there are 200 member banks across the United States. I say wherever there's hunger, there's a member that's there uh, serving yeah. that community. And unfortunately, every county and parish in this whole country has an issue with food insecurity. So even the richest counties do. So yeah. 
Um, and then we, those organizations, those food banks who collect food often and often during this pandemic, they've been out there on the front line serving the food as well. But they also partner with big um, partners, big pantries, and sometimes medium and sometimes small. Lots of times people are receiving food from a food bank that's part of the Feeding America Network and they don't even, or a pantry, and they don't even realize it because it could be anything from a very large organization to a basement at a church. Um, right. So as I said, we go to where hunger is and hunger is just about everywhere, especially right now. And, but we get to do that because of people like you and because of all of those people who, who are, um, are signing up to be a part of the solution. And one of the things that's given me gratification, and I hope you are talking about how it feels, that like I say um, there's a gift for the giver in this. Yeah. And to be in a situation right now where we can feel so hopeless um, and sometimes helpless, what, what can I do? What power do I have? So much of this. I'm being told when I can go out, when I can't, what to do. Well, this is something you can do. You can decide to be a part of the solution here. And together, we can actually solve hunger in this country. If we, when we choose to, we will. And yeah. I believe one of the silver linings in the dark cloud that is this pandemic is that people have a lot more awareness about the struggle that's out there. And then, I, again, I will count on our country to step up and deliver. When we know better, we do better. We now know better, and we are doing better. So I'm very, very optimistic about the future because of what I've seen. Oh, well, wow. That's, that's, really, that's, that's really beautiful and um, informative. I mean, I, and you're just right. I think you're just right about what people can do right now in this moment and, and the, what you can feel. I mean, I, was, I saw my pastor give this sermon the other day about, about the circle around us. We have a circle around us, and sometimes we want to make that smaller to exclude people. And it's like the bigger you can make that circle, the better. And if you're in pain, one thing you can do to alleviate that pain is to look inside of that big circle around you and see who else is in pain and see what you can do about it. And if you can do something about that, you'll realize you don't focus on the pain that you feel. You don't even feel it. And, and so that's kind of a beautiful thing. And I, who knows? It'd be kind of cool if we could see some more of that uh, in this country in our, in our own small way we're trying to attempt to, to get yeah. some of that done. And it's not in a small way. It's in a big way. You were talking about the math on this. Um, for every $1, 10 meals. Yeah. And, and I will, the only thing I'd say is I would appreciate it if there are lots of $100 million gifts out there. But I also, I also appreciate every dollar, every dime, every yeah. minute people spend helping their neighbors. Because every time we make an investment, we're really investing in our communities and we're yeah. investing in our country. And yeah. we are our country. So we're the ones yeah. who decide who this country is going to be. And we have people stepping up. I do want to thank you for something that you didn't even realize. May I do that? Oh, okay. So, last time I was on, you talked about my family. I have a unique family story. I've known about hunger my whole life. Um, I'm one of 108 children through birth, adoption, and foster care. My mom and dad, um, remarkable people, Mary Alice and Warren Babineau. And my dad's sick right now. And he's, he's confined to his bed. And, um, and when they try to perk them up, you know, the family members surround them and they try to find ways to, to keep them happy and inspired. And one of the things they did was they replayed our last broadcast. And what you did in the broadcast is you said his name twice. And each time you said Warren Babineau Jr., my dad perked up and he was like, well, wow. <laughs> well, all right. Now, I don't know, even know if he noticed his daughter was actually in the frame as well, but he definitely noticed when you said his name. So um, I am working to try to make manifest the fact that those two people, those remarkable people are my parents. I get a chance to do that in this work. Um, it gets to be meaningful because people like you decide to do it with us. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful to you, Chris, and to all of the people for participating and thanks for saying my dad's name. Um, oh, we appreciated it. That is the sweetest thing. Thank you so much. That really, that, that almost, uh, that, that moves me. I'm very moved by that. Thank you. And, uh, we'll be, I'll be praying for him. I'll be, be, be praying for, for Warren. And, um, Thank you. and I'll say it again. We'll Warren Babineau. 
and uh and uh and uh yeah i i, yes. I really love you it's great having <laughs> thank you, you on thank you so much and um let's let's this is this is one this is one event but we'll keep going we'll keep doing stuff as long as there's a need let's keep let's keep this relationship going and, and i keep up the good work god bless you did i lose you Okay, I think we might have lost her there, but that was beautiful, man. Did you hear that? It's gonna make me cry. Um, okay, so we've got we've got some more guests. I'm gonna keep it moving. Um, our next guest is a pretty important guy. Uh, our next guest is hold on. Um, he is Mr. Universe. He is the Terminator. He's the former governor of California. He's my father-in-law, my daughter's grandfather, in a word. I better not screw this up or I will be terminated. It's a lot riding on this. I'm kidding. There he is, Arnold. Hello, Chris. Hello. Hey, Evans. how are you? Oh, I know Chris Evans, sorry. <laughs> I'd, I'd screw up this whole thing right from the beginning. Maybe Chris Brad. I mean, I should, I should, I didn't look at the cue cards the right way. Sorry about that. Mm. I mean, I, I should know your name. I should know your name. That's for sure. You're my favorite uh, son-in-law. <laughs> I'm your sure. only son-in-law. I better be your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Where are you right? Where, where, how are you celebrating uh, New Year's tonight? I'm, I'm I'm in San Valley up here. You know, skiing, skiing nice. every day, and uh, being my favorite place. Uh, and I I heard that you are wearing your favorite hat. I saw it, then I said to myself, okay, I'm going to put on my favorite hat, which is an Austrian hat, uh, yeah. and that makes it fun. But in any case, it's a congratulations on the great work that you're doing. And uh, I think the, you know, I think the world of you, and not just because you're my uh, you know, son-in-law, but I mean, you also are so giving, and you think not only about yourself and about your career, but also about other people. And I think this is the most important thing, as a matter of fact, when I think about the six rules to success that I always talk about, one of them is give something back. Give something back. You know, that everyone has the power of giving something back. And uh, to make this country better and to make, keep this country the number one nation in the world, the only way that happens is, is if we give something back. You know? and, and this is the same is also now when the, we have this real problem with the coronavirus. Uh, you know, I, it goes back to uh, what John F. Kennedy said. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And I think yeah. this is the important thing. So it's the, the, the government and, 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 and uh, you know, they have a certain responsibility. It's a big responsibility, but we can't just rely on them. We have to yeah. do our work. And I think that what I'm talking about here is something very little. And that is besides giving, you know, when people are starving and so on, but also to wear a mask. I mean, if people are asking what can they contribute to this disastrous situation that we're in, it's very simple. Wear your mask. Because yeah. if you wear the mask, you're really protecting other people. Not just that you're protecting yourself. If you wear the N95 mask, you protect yourself. But just any surgical mask, if you go out there so that people don't get exposed. Like when I go on a bike ride, I always wear a mask. Because I yeah. don't want to have people exposed to, in case I have the corona, to then affect a whole bunch of other people but by, by, by my body fluid, you know, all this stuff going out in the air. And so this is why it is very important that people really buckle down and really become a team player in this whole thing and all work together. Then we can lick this problem once and for all. Yeah. Fant I, yeah, I agree. It's interesting how, how divided we are along that lines and people are almost like kind of tribal about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Maybe it's be a t sign of the times or because of how divided we've been politically, people are always signaling which side they want to represent or you know, maybe we're easily manipulated by the things that we see. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm glad to hear that from someone uh, such as yourself, because I think people, you know, you're former governor of California. You were a Republican governor. And, and I think um, it is important to, for people to hear that from some from someone such as yourself that, look, there, there is real evidence that wearing a mask can prevent people from spreading this disease. I mean, it doesn't stop everything, but it's certainly... Uh, seems that um it's the right thing to do and, it, and it's unfortunate that there's this mythology around it like whether whether or not it works and so i, I agree with you i think that it, that it is an important thing to do it's a courteous thing to do 
Um, let me ask you this. But I mean, Chris, the, 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 I just wanted to just say one thing here. The big mistake that people make is they make it political. Yeah. You know, because everything in this country right now is political. You know, the presidential election and then there were the senatorial elections and Congress and all of this stuff. And so everything became such a it became such a political year, and especially in the last few years. It was so political that everything was Democrats versus Republicans. But just yeah. remember one thing. This is like pollution. You know, in pollution, I always say there is no Democratic air or there's a Republican air. We all breathe the same air. So therefore, let's go and terminate pollution because pollution yeah. kills 7 million people worldwide every year. And the same is with this pandemic. We have to go and think about it that the virus does not attack Democrats or Republicans. The virus doesn't care about any of that. The virus just attacks and it wants to kill you. That's it. And so this is why we have to go and get rid of this old Democrat versus Republicans. He's a Republican, so therefore he doesn't believe in masks. He's a Democrat and he believes in masks. This is nonsense dialogue. We have to just work together, wear the mask, not worry about Democrat or Republican. This is not a party issue. This is a people's issue. It's a health issue. And we got to go and stop this crazy, insane escalation of this virus, of how many people die and all this. And the only way we can do it is by working together. Let's go. I love it, man. I love it. You're, you're, you're speaking the truth like you always do, Arnold, and I really appreciate that. That's, that's, that's great. Let me, let me ask you, if I may, um, we're in California. You know, we live in California. Different states have been approaching this in a different way versus, you know, shutting their economies down versus not shutting their economies down. There's also a division along that line. Is there, is there anything like you, if you, you were governor, how would you handle this differently? Is there something you, differently you would do or a different approach you could see us taking? Well, I'm sure that the, our government here in, in uh, California is doing everything that they can. And, uh, you know, but the fact of the matter is we have a very fragmented system. It is ludicrous for us to think that each state should do their own thing. I think that we have to have a national approach. As soon as this virus began, we should have had an, a national approach just like they have in Australia. In Australia, they had a very severe, very serious lockdown, as you remember. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they really got rid of the problem. And now yeah. they have rock and roll concerts, they have music concerts, they have restaurants open, they can go to the theaters and all this kind of stuff. And there's many other countries like that. There's a national approach where everyone comes together. In, in California or in America, there's, the states are doing different things, then districts are doing different things, and cities are doing different things. And so everyone has their own opinion about what should be done. We're not going to do this. We're going to do that. And, this. and it becomes in a political issue again. So I think this right. is the wrong approach. We have to work together as a whole nation. This is where the power comes, you know. And so this is, and I think that I, of course, am from, because you asked me about when, uh, when I was governor, um, we had a pandemic stockpile that I created. And it was, we spent $200 million on that. Because I believe in the seven Ps, proper prior planning prevents pissed poor performance, right? So this is like, it's just very simple. So you go and prepare because something like this can happen. It has happened in the history, in the past, and it will happen again. Not just this virus, other viruses will come. So this is why I decided that we are going to prepare and put together a stockpile. You know, a pandemic stockpile with, you know, thousands and thousands of ventilators and to have masks, millions of masks and and, and gear to protect people and all that stuff. All this was, and then, of course, then, you know, after I left, they dismantled the whole thing because they didn't want to pay the $5 million upkeep every year. So this is kind of penny wise, pound foolish. And this yeah. is the kind of things that government does. And then, of course, people have to pay for the consequences after that. And this yeah. is what we see now, restaurants closing up and all this stuff. And so I personally think that sometimes we have to do, have to have tough measures but I think you have to be also sensitive about uh, how we go about it. You can't just close every restaurant. I mean, you can't go to the people at the restaurant owners and say, hey, you can go and serve food outdoors. So then they serve food outdoors and they're building all this stuff outside, spending a fortune of money to build all this stuff outside so they can serve outside. And then all of a sudden, two months later, they go and say, you have to close that too. Why are we closing outdoor restaurants? I don't understand that because there's really no case that it shows that has spread that there was a huge spread that came from outdoor eating. It right. doesn't exist. So, so there's some people that get punished in a kind of unfair way, I think. You know, this is just my personal opinion. And I also think that government should be a really 
uh, concentrating on what can we do now for those restaurants. What we, yeah. you're doing right now a charity event, you know, uh, to, to feed everybody. Well, the government can go and keep those restaurants open and make them cook food for the hungry people that have no food. So yeah. the, the government can go and pay out the restaurants so they can, can stay open, not to serve food there, but to serve food and to deliver it to the people that really need the food. So there's all kinds of things that you can do like that that really will help to keep people employed and to keep, keep the people uh, food on the table, get them food on the table and all this stuff. So you just have to think it through rather than just being very rigid about all right. of this stuff. And then with the vaccine, as you can see, I mean, uh, when you have the president promising the nation that uh, 100 million vaccines will be delivered by the end of the year. Then we find out there's only 20 million that will be delivered by the end of the year. So then people get fed up about politicians lying all the time and saying things that they don't really mean. You know, right. and then the 20 million get delivered and then there's only like a small fraction, like you know, 70 percent or so that have gotten now the vaccine. Because we right. have this protocol that you can't give anyone a vaccine before the healthcare workers in the hospitals and the nurses and the doctors get it. Well, you can do it there simultaneously. You don't have to just wait until they all get it and then you start going and giving uh, you know the vaccine to people over 75 or something like this. So there's, I, th I think that there are mistakes that are being made all the time. But the key thing is, is that we have to work together as a team. I, I, I wow, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think you're right. I think working together is. We're in a trip. We're in a, it's, it's it's hard to see, it's it's hard to see how that can happen right now. I guess it's just getting the right people in place and maybe we just have to inspire people. Yeah. We just have to. This is the important thing, and I think that celebrities like you had on a bunch of celebrities on your show. And by the way, I have to tell you that you should be a talk show host besides an actor because <laughs> what you have done today, the way you have interviewed people, you made it really interesting. I watched the entire thing. It was wonderful to just hear. Jamie, you know, Fox talking about his training and uh, getting ready for this movie and to do this and that and to get in shape and all this. And you see Bryce uh, Howard, uh, you know, the, to, to talk about her acting and directing and about all this stuff and her passion about it. It's just wonderful to, to hear all this stuff. So Thanks. you should be a talk show host. I, I mean, remember, there's 24 hours a day. You just yeah. don't have to sleep, uh, <laughs> you know, your eight hours. Yeah. You get up a little earlier or you go to bed a little later and you have a talk show at the same time. Yeah, I think Catherine would like that. You spend I think time she would like. Home. Honestly, I might like that better than being an actor. If I could just do a show in you know, twenty minutes from the house and make it a gig, I might do it. I honestly might do it. I you know, if it means I don't have to go to, you know, I don't know. I've got maybe one day. Maybe one day. It's a fallback plan. Uh, thank you. That means right. that means the world to me, Arnold. It, no, it really absolutely. Does. I mean, people always say to me, "says Why do you say such uh, so many great positive things about Chris Pratt?" Just because he's your brother and as your, your son-in-law, and I said, no, it's not because he's my son-in-law. I said, it's, it's because of that. I said, but there's so many things we have in common, right? I mean, think about that. I mean, we both love Catherine. Yep. We both are into acting. We both like working out. Yeah. And we both have no Oscar. I mean, so there's a lot of things that we have in common. <laughs> think about that for a second. I mean, it's just, it's wild, you know. So this is why I just love you. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're fantastic. Oh man! Wow. Well, I feel a lot better about not having an Oscar now because if I if I did, then uh, then it would. Be I will remind you. I will remind you regularly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arnold, man! Listen, you are a classic. You're an original. You're awesome. Uh, I'm I'm really lucky to have you in my life, and I and I appreciate you giving me some of your time on New Year's Eve. It's really nice of you to to sign on and do this with me. I want to tell you that you know I'm a man of action. I don't want to just talk about things. I want to do it. And this is why I want to donate $10,000 to your charity today here because I think that you need the money. I think there's so many people out there that need the food. I think the organization is fantastic that you're doing this for. So I think it's really great. So I just want to be a part of it, not just to talk about it, but to actually do something about it. Wow. Thank you, Arnold. That's 100,000 meals. Uh, and, I, and, and thank you so, so much. I, I really appreciate that. You are a man of action indeed. Thank you my so much. My pleasure, and I'm proud of you. Awesome. Okay? Oh, and man. give my love to Catherine. I sure will. I will. Okay. You bet I will. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Love you. See you. Bye-bye. Love you too, man. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year. Well, I'm going to cry, man. That was, that is, <laughs> that was awesome. That was really awesome. Wow. Uh, God is good. I am blessed. That was, that was beautiful. Um, 
So uh, that was that was awesome. I'm kind of blown away. Okay, well, thank you so much to uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I didn't. Uh, uh, wow. Um, listen, I've got something to show you guys here. Um, as as you as you know, as I mentioned before, I, I got my break on Parks and Recreation, and uh, you know, I've been thinking a lot about how Leslie Nope and the department would have handled this pandemic. I, I do know that just like us, they'd want us to sing bye bye to 2020 that was uh that was a uh, a joke that didn't work it was bye bye a little special anyways um this song still does hold up anyways um i had my friends from parks and rec uh send me some videos and let's see if i can get this going here okay stand by like i said high tech uh and by the way arnold's ten thousand just put us over six hundred thousand dollars from over 9,000 uh, donors. So we're over $600,000. So amazing. Here you go. I've got a nice uh, video from my friends at Parks and Recreation. Hello, Chris. I got your request to record a video. Uh, I'm out surviving in the Sonoran Desert of Mexico. Uh, I... I remember when Carl Reiner was on Parks and Recreation, he said that that uh, Chaz Pratt, he called you Chaz, is handsome as the day is long, that's what he said, but don't trust him with your money. Is that, is that the kind of messaging you're looking for? Let me think about it. Hi, everyone. It's Amy Poehler, just wishing you a... Happy New Year, and reminding you to please give generously. There are so many people in need, and let's get to next year um, together and uh, with a new sense of hope for all people. And let's get this year done with. And if you don't believe me, take it from Helen Slayton Hughes, a.k.a. Ethel Beavers from Parks and Recreation. Hello, everybody. I'm <laughs> wonderful to have a visit from Amy Poehler. It's beautiful. And you do what she tells you to. Got that? I said so. All right. Put my mask back on. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Chris, I'm still thinking. Feed thy neighbor. That sounds like one of your ploys when your trailer was next to my trailer and you told me to order an extra slab of ribs and then you took it. Is, it, is this that kind of thing? Hello, everyone. I just got some sort of text from Chris Pratt about a charity. I don't really know what it is or what it's about, but all I can tell you is please donate as much as you can right now. Aw. So, I let Chris Pratt say... <laughs> In my house, mm -hmm. he's had a new baby. He's with my goddaughter, Catherine. He's married to. It's it's the right thing to do, but it's not enough. No. He wants me now to make a video for him. Well, I make. Come on, man. I live in doing this. What? Is he paying for it? No. The good news is. It's for a great cause. It is for Feed Thy Neighbor, which I support. Um, unlike Chris Pratt, who's probably eating all the food in my pantry right now. Unfortunately, one in four kids in our country don't know where the next meal is coming from. And it's the least we can do, in all seriousness, in all seriousness. I'm really happy to be a part of it, and I'm glad he asked me. I just wish he'd get out of my house. But if I had one wish, it would be that more kids knew where their meal was coming from. So I'll suffer with Pratt eating all of mine. So please, you guys, seriously, donate, participate. Um, so many people in need, and so many of us are so fortunate to not be in that place. It's the least we can do to try to help. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. God bless. Love you all. Chris, if you still are in touch with those Navy SEAL guys um, from Zero Dark Thirty, 
I'm lost. Uh, I'm in the Sonoran <laughs> Desert, uh, south of the border, and I'm and I'm frightened. Hey, everybody, how are you? This is Jim O'Hare. Uh, I do believe a lot of you know me, though, as the guy who played Jerry Gergich, or Gary, or Larry, or Terry, or Barry, or whatever you want to call me, from Parks and Recreation. Can I just fast forward through this? Yeah, that guy. Uh, hey, you guys, I'm here with our, our boy Chris Pratt, um, and I'm just encouraging you, if you can, to donate to Feed Thy Neighbor. Such an important, important cause this time of year, especially with what we've been through in the last year. 2020, no, 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 not a fan. But we're looking forward to 2021, and with your help, it's going to make a difference for so many people. Now, before I go, I want to share a quick story. So I don't know if a lot of you know this, but during takes, you know, different scenes on Parks and Recreation, for seven years, I trained Chris Pratt on how to become a movie action hero. Now, to be honest, for me, it came natural. I just had it. But boy, I had a lot of work to do with Pratt. Uh, but, you know, I did what I could. And then the, the call comes in from Marvel. Jim, we want you. You are our new guardian of the galaxy. And I said, no. No, I'm not. I see why you want me. But no. But I know who should be. And now we have Chris Pratt as our guardian of the galaxy. Yes, that's how it happened. Uh, it's odd. I've never heard him mention this story on any of the interviews he does or any of the big important events. Uh, but, you know, we all have our own memories of how things went down. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so guys, but seriously, please donate if you can. It's an important cause. Feed thy neighbor. Uh, Chris, if you can get a hold of Megan, tell her I love her. And, uh, Tell her not to get involved in any of your money-making schemes since the last one. Um, loan, bail, bail bonds, loan your thy neighbor. How'd that work out? Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, a lot of hungry people out there, so let's all donate whatever we can. And here's, sorry, here's to a better and brighter 2021. Happy New Year. Yeah, I don't think so. Fool me once. I mean, I feel like... Uh, well, I had some... Uh, I had a, 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 a couple of other... Anyways, that's my video. That's my Parks video. Um, I'm sorry, uh, though, because I think what happened was I played the wrong video. I think there was a pre another video um, that, that had uh, Retta on it. And I apologize if you're watching Retta. I think I accidentally, uh, I accidentally played the wrong video. So nonetheless, thank you, guys. I love that. Now, okay, now my next guest... A lot have, of you have been asking about, okay? Um, ladies, uh, this young man, this young man will be joining all the way from UK, that's United Kingdom, where it is already 2021. So he's actually joining us from the future. I, I, I mean, I wonder what he knows that we don't. Maybe, maybe he can give us some insight into what this year has in store for us. Please welcome Peter Parker, the kid wonder, Spider-Man himself. He's an amazing young man. He's a dancer, a triple threat, a golfer, and... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, he was it's asleep. Like... I'm so sorry. What's up, bro? Hey, dude, how you doing? Dude, it's so late. You're in the UK. I'm, yeah, I'm staying at my parents' house and they're asleep oh. in there. So I can't, I have oh to be God. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, no way. Thanks for having, for, uh, for picking up. No, I dude, thank you for having me. How are oh, you? you? Happy New Year, bro. It's not New Year there yet, is it? Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's New Year's Eve, but, okay. uh, but it is, it's New Year. So it's already 2021 where you are, right? It is, yeah, it is. And things are looking... Things are looking bright, man. People are wearing masks. People in London are taking it seriously. The vaccine is here. My grandparents got it last week. My other granny's hopefully going to get it next week. 
all of the key workers and people who are like keeping the country going and getting it. So things things are really looking up, man. Well, listen, what do you, uh, I've got so many uh, comments coming through. The girls want to know what you sleep in. What I sleep in? I'm, yeah. I'm in my pajamas. It's not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and find them. I have some Spider-Man pajamas, but I couldn't find them. I don't know why. Well, listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. No no one asked that. I, I was actually hoping Just to, wanted to uh, find out what you sleep in. Yeah. Um, so did you, did you actually stay up till midnight or had you gone to bed before? Yeah, I stayed up with my mum. We've had the most boring New Year's Eve. It was just me and my mum. We stayed up. We watched a bit of TV. Then I came back. I went to bed. And now I'm here on the phone with you. So I feel a little bit delirious, a little bit sleepy, a little bit hungover maybe, but I'm fine. I'm good. I'm happy. It's good, good to see good. you. And what, what, talk about um, your 2020. Uh, any bright spots? Um, what, what were some of your, your bright spots in this bleak year? Well, I've been so lucky this year because I, had, I shot Uncharted with Mark Wahlberg in Berlin, which was amazing, which went really well. We started shooting Spider-Man 3 a few months ago which has been crazy and really weird because we're shooting it back in Atlanta. And okay. that's where I did my audition for Spider-Man. And we're actually shooting in the stage that I did my audition. Oh. So it's like a really weird full circle story of like walking through the same door I walked through as an 18 year old kid, like nervous, like, oh my God, I hope I get this job. And then walking yeah. through the door at 24, making the third movie loving life, confident, enjoying everything that's happening to me. So it was, it's been amazing, dude. It's been awesome. I've been very lucky. I've, I know a lot of people around the world have had a really hard time. Um, and that's why it's amazing that we have people like you. I'm looking down here. You've raised $32,000 tonight alone. It's amazing, dude. That's so cool. So yeah, I just, we've raised. Thank you. It's awesome, man. I'm so, I'm so chuffed you asked me to be a part of this. I'm really, really, really grateful and happy. It's so nice that you that you uh, that you were a part of this. I, I'm such a huge fan of you as a person. You know that I've always, since the moment I met you, you just always have had a special uh, presence and a kindness about you that I knew was going to carry you a long way. A lot of people in our business can be assholes and can yeah, you know get a, especially uh, young young people when they when they reach the level of success that you've reached, they can lose touch and you never have. You've always been so close with your family, with your brothers, um, your brother's charity. That was in fact. The, tell your, your foundation uh tell me tell everyone about the foundation and the reason that tom agreed to come on with me is he said this so because this is primarily you know feeding america this is a this is a, a charity that's focused primarily on raising money the money that's being raised is going to be used in america hopefully we're raising awareness in a way that could be global we could inspire someone in the uk for instance or in europe or africa or south america because instagram is worldwide we could especially when i have tom holland on as my guest now with uh 30,000 viewers, um, you know, uh, it, it's something we can inspire people to help their neighbor and that kind of a thing. But you, you specifically said that you were happy to help an American cause because why? Well, because we're so lucky with the brothers trust that when we ask for support, so much of the money that is donated comes from America and, and we, you know, we don't want people to think that we're taking money from the States and, and putting it into charities in other places in the world. So we're very, very like, um, it's a very important thing for us to make sure that we support American charities as well. Um, we have two or three in Detroit. We have some in Georgia. And, and then obviously this charity that you're supporting today, it just for us, we just want to make sure that we show our appreciation to all of our American friends who have been helping us throughout the years. And, uh, and, you know, the Brothers Trust for us is all about shedding light on charities that don't necessarily get the exposure that they deserve. Um, and we're really adamant that we watch and make sure that every penny is spent in the right way, goes to the right people and makes an immediate difference in changing people's lives and putting smiles on people's faces. Um, so it's been an amazing journey for me and my family. It's been so rewarding to be a part of something that's bigger than being a fucking actor and pretending yeah. to be a superhero. Um, yeah. So I just, I love that we, we were able to turn this amazing thing that's happened to me into something even more positive. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's cool, man. It's really cool. I'm chuffed. I'm happy. So you, are you and your brothers pretty competitive in relative, like setting up the, you guys are competitive with each other? 
Yeah, I mean, we all play golf, obviously, as you know, because we've played a few times together. And yeah. Harry and I especially, we never have a good round together. It's always that, like, one of us plays really well and the other one plays really badly. And it, honestly, nothing grinds my gears more than losing to Harry. It honestly, <laughs> it makes me so unbelievably upset. But, um, but we need to play again. When this is all over and everything's good and the world is back to normal, we need to play again. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I would love that. I, I, Tom, I would love nothing more than to play. I want to play somewhere up in the UK. I mean, you know, I, I'd love to play uh, uh, in Scotland. I think that would be dope. Like, that's That'd like so cool. that's where the game was I'd invented. Like, go play St. Andrews or something. Um, right. So, listen, thinking... before I let you go, I want you to plug Cherry. I'm really pumped about it. I know the Russo Brothers movie – this is a movie, Cherry. This is really stri a, a, a stretch for you. It's like gro your growth as an actor. I, I loved The Devil all the time. I mean, the movie is bonkers and yeah. really crazy, but you're awesome in it. And the movie was really, really, like, it was like, it's, it's a different, different tone for you. It, it, gave me, it got me excited about uh, what I can expect to see from you in the future. And so talk a little bit about Thank Cherry you. and tell people where they can watch it because we've got a lot of fans on here. Yeah, with Devil all the time, my granny was really like, kind of put off by me. It was really weird. She was like, I don't really know how to think about what you did in that film. I'm like, well, Granny, I, I, I didn't actually do that stuff. Although I did accidentally, poor kid, the one kid that I beat up outside the car, he had a bag over his face and I'm like punching him in the face. And the director was like, you need to hit the bag or it doesn't look real. And on the last take, and it was a total accident, I absolutely drilled him like right in the mouth. And he was a top, proper champ and took it like a champ and he was fine. But I still feel really bad about that. Um, but um, but yeah, so Cherry, Cherry is my is my next film that comes out comes out in February on Apple TV. Uh, the Russos directed it. Um, mm -hmm. Our lovely friends, the Russos, and it's a massive departure for me as an actor. It was like a huge step and a risk to take as a job, but then having the Russos in my corner, kind of the captain of the ship, I felt really safe to take that plunge into the kind of next chapter of my career, if you like. Um, yeah, and I'm super proud of it, man. I'm super proud of it. I, I've seen it a few times now, and I've showed my family. My mum was like, she didn't really like it because it's pretty. It's not an easy watch, and there's some things that my character goes through in that film, which is really hard to comprehend. And the idea of being a veteran and suffering from PTSD and falling into this this systemic problem of of medicating people when they should they need treatment not subscriptions and uh, prescriptions and and uh it's 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 a hard film to watch but one that i really hope will shed the light on a problem that's happening around the world all the time um but uh but yeah i'm excited man i really am excited about it that's awesome man i'm excited what about you dude? what are you what are you doing what have you got coming up oh, you I'm, just in London, I'm, done. Right? I'm, I'm done with acting you done? Um, I'm going to I'm going to host uh face Instagram um charity things and continue to do my favorite hobby which is Play I with put yourself? this action figure <laughs> up my butt. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, no. Um what I don't know, I got a movie coming out I did to the Tomorrow War which is yeah. going to be uh I love that I'm whispering now because I know that your parents <gasps> are in the room. My dad's going to come tomorrow on and be like shut the fuck. Um we, I've got, I've got, well, it's, I've got um, Guardians uh, coming up awesome. uh, next year, and I've got Thor. Uh, Thor. I'm going to go be in Thor in Australia, so I'll be traveling to Australia in about a week, and excited to go to a, a country that took the the lockdown very seriously, eradicated mm -hmm. the disease, and now mm -hmm. are, they're fully up and back to normal. And back to normal. So, like, dude, that'll be so I'll go weird. There and maybe like... go to like a restaurant. That'll be so strange. That'll be such a strange experience. I feel like going to a restaurant is so alien now. I know, I know. It, we'll get there though. I think we're gonna get there soon. Um, wait a minute. Did you just say you're gonna be in Thor? Yeah. That's so crazy. Might, did it? Am I not supposed I feel, to say that? I feel like no one knew that, bro. No, they knew that. They knew that. I think they knew that. No, they knew that. If they didn't, they know now. Oh shit. Well, they know now. Um, <laughs> I was like, no, Chris, no, don't. <laughs> um, anyways, listen, man, uh, it's so good to see you. I'm gonna let you get back to sleep. Love you, pal. Thanks for doing this. You're no, a, thank you for a, having a, me. Everyone who's watching, chap. donate. Thank you so much. This is awesome, Chris. I'm so happy for you, mate. Really appreciate you having me on. 
I appreciate you, man. All right, mate. All right. Love Good you, night, Tom. Speak to you soon. Love you too, Bye. Bye. Wow, that was awesome. What it's such a sweet kid. Um, so this next guest is I'm really, 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 really excited about. Um, he is he is a country music phenom. Uh, I'm just gonna get I mean, the man needs no introduction. I, I can't even tell you how excited I am to uh, to 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 to, to have him on um, he's somebody that I've always loved somebody whose music I've memorized and sang along uh, on the radio before I ever knew I would be in a situation where I'd consider this person a friend. So here we go. I'm going to send a request to somebody who's just like, you're and you'll probably see my brains explode all over this shirtless Rob Lowe behind me. Um, he, I sent a request. We'll see if it goes through, but uh, I'll give you some uh, hints. Uh, Papa loves mama. Uh, the river. Uh, um, that summer, uh, he, he, uh, uh, friends in low places. Um, let me see here. Let's see here. It's waiting. Uh, we'll see. He, he's coming. Uh, it, 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 he, I keep you giving hints like you don't know that it's Garth Brooks. It is Garth Brooks, but, um, waiting, I'm going to wait and I'll tell you what I'm going to cancel. I'm going to resend it just in case. Cause sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So standing by. Um, and honestly, honestly, I think if, if we pressure him, he might even, uh, he might even sing, uh, oh, there he is, big man. <laughs> Happy up? New Year. Gee, Happy New Year, man. How you doing? Is it just turned New Year there yet or? No, not yet. Not yet. You're no, we're not, we're not as far away as uh, Britain is. No, we're, we're not in the future. Well, I guess we're in the future. <laughs> Maybe a couple hours from you. <laughs> What's up, Garth? So Nothing that's, pops. That's the beautiful Nashville skyline behind you? Yeah, it is, man. And, and this city right here has been through a lot this year. So yeah. just uh, I got to tell you, the more that you know the city, the more you love it. And uh, it's really treated, treated me like an adopted son here. You know, I'm from Oklahoma, but uh, I feel like a part of the family here. And this is, this is a great family to belong to. That's amazing. Yeah, a lot going through. They've gone through a whole heck of a lot. There was like a... A crazy scare the other day, wasn't there? Yeah, man, and, and they, they had a bombing, you know, and, and before yeah. the pandemic, they had a tornado go, go right through the middle of it. So all you see, though, is resilience. All you see are people coming together and uh, because they know, you know, who's going to lift up Tennessee is Tennessee. And so uh, they do it really, really well. It's, it's uh, for me, I find it very much like Oklahoma, probably very much like where you're from, just uh, good people that just yeah. want to take care, take care of each other and understand when people are down, it's not a handout, it's a hand up. I love that. You're just right. It's not a handout. It's a hand up. We're, we've got uh, almost 1,200 different donations since we started this, upwards of $35,000. And Oh, sweet. And, and that's we, – we, we, we're, we're over 600 or close to $700,000 uh, wow. total. And so that's, that's pretty great. And Feeding America and Greater Good Charities. So a lot of food banks. One of them we talked to is right, right, right around your neck of the woods. And um, – so, anyways, pretty pretty cool. I see. Is that a guitar strap that you have? Uh, this is the here? guitar strap with the guitar. Oh no! This is how I hang out around the house, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I had a man that I love dearly ask me, "Hey, if we do this, would you just have a guitar hanging around your neck?" I said, "You betcha." So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Perfect. Perfect. So, so um, you you so you had a thing. Um, you had a big tour plan, didn't you? Yeah, we've uh, we're kind of we went through the first year of it. It's three it's three years. It's still the summer of twenty two, and of course this year's been off. Uh, we got to play Detroit, where I got my ass kicked in Detroit, and I so want to I so want to rematch with that city. They they I came out, I smacked them right in the mouth. We had the new entry, full three sixty stage, so front row everywhere. And I I mean I see them go back from there. I go I got you now. And then they, when they pop back, I was trying to catch up all night. They wore my ass out. I'm wanting a rematch for Detroit. They're oh. great, great bunch. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And you did a, you did a, you had a great idea, which was just to, to do a Facebook Live performance, and people would, would request songs, right? And did I yeah, read man, correctly that you broke the internet? It actually caused Facebook <laughs> to crash. That's because I have my secret weapon, which I have here tonight too. So, Monsieur, would you want to jump in here? So, the Queen, when she comes on, then all of a sudden, all the hearts and everything kind of. 
Hello, Chris oh, Pratt. Oh, what's up, Trisha? How you doing? Good, how are so you? so nice to see the queen and the king together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about I the king part, both. but you got the queen right. Sure. I love you guys both so much. My intro originally, when I thought maybe I'd be coming with both of you, I was just going to talk about, anyways, it doesn't matter. It would have been We're all funny. Go ahead. No, 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 no. It was going to be that, you know, we've got, we've got, tri that we've got this amazing country artist and she's, you know, that, that I've loved this person my whole life. I know the, the lyrics to all of this artist's music. And we also have her plus one, Garth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. It's an honor to be a plus one of this woman. Yeah, it's so nice to see you guys. Are you going to sing for us? You yeah, I mean, we can sing. Are you? We can sing anything you want. And try to remember, we were, we were counted up the other day. If uh, the first hundred songs that we ever did, like the first 10 albums, Trisha sang on 77 of those 100 songs. So You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so she's kind of been like, uh, you know, Milton Sledge is the drummer on all that stuff. Bobby Wood, piano player, losing all those guys. And uh, it's funny, man, just the same way. You're, you're singing on everything. Alan Reynolds, the producer, said, hey, where's that girl that you sing with on the demos? And brought him in, introduced them. Introduced them. He fell in love with her, of course, instantly. And. Uh, she would get her Stop. record deal. Stop. She'd get her record deal about a year after ours, and then we would start touring together. So we've kind of been together ever since. That's so but cool. I remember, I remember asking you to come in and sing on this record. Uh, so I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry, like a bird upon the wind. These waters on my sky, I'll never reach my destination. If I never try, I will sail my vessel to the river of dry. Ooh, better than the first time you ever sang it. I love Thank it. you. I, I got to tell you guys that, that that song, I mean, every song, but that song is so beautiful. And I love what it says. I love the message of that song. Thank you. I good. love the idea that, well, you, you do. Just the, I, if, I, if I'm correct about it, just that our body is this vessel and we're sailing down the river and you sail it till the river runs dry. And I just love it. I love the messages of faith in it. And I, I love just, it's beautiful. It's, it's so good. It's so good. I got a little teary eyed just now listening <laughs> to you guys. And you know, I just love you so much. Yeah, you know, with, with New Year's Eve, you make all these resolutions and stuff and wishes and you wish for other people. What I wish for you is the same thing I wish for me and my children. I hope that you leave this earth with a list unfinished because that means you worked all the way up until the day you got to go, you know? So yeah. I think, I think wasting time or, um, you know, James Taylor said it best. Don't let them take your wasted time. There's a place for that. But, um, I sure love the busy part, man. That's, that's a, that's the fun part. You do love the busy part. I got the <laughs> relaxed part down. I'm, a, I'm the relaxed part of the duo. <laughs> <laughs> Trish, you've been, you've been cooking up. So I don't know how I'm going to, I'm supposed to go do a, a movie here next month and and i've just been in quarantine and i've just been eating i know you love to bake have you just been baking up a storm i did i, I you know we we've been in quarantine too so we haven't seen anybody but i still made all the food like garth wanted me to make the full thanksgiving dinner for 14 even though it was just the two of us <laughs> so <laughs> i did um we did deliver some food after that we did um and then uh you know i made we used to have a, we usually have a cookie party at my house with all my friends and family and we all make cookies and we didn't do that this year so i made all the cookies um, gave a lot of them away too, and then um, and then today we we figured to really double our luck, we would have all of the stuff you're supposed to have for New Year's on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So we did <laughs> tonight. We did pork chops. And we did black eyed peas. I make mashed potatoes for Garth to hide his black eyed peas in because he doesn't like black eyed peas. Collard greens, cornbread. That's what we had. Did all the the uh, traditional luck kind of things. Yeah, it's tough though, man. We we go through phases of like I mean you're just home, so you know it's like well I've Played as much Nintendo 64 as I can. What's in the fridge? You know, so it's like we're just trying to, uh, you know, just oh, trying, man. To, trying to make it work. I got to tell you, too, what we've kind of found, which uh, I love, I think the next shipment comes out January 20th or something. But if you're ever wondering about getting an Oculus Quest 2, those things are phenomenal. We're not oh, really? paid affiliates of Oculus. We just <laughs> gave, gave them to each other Dude, for Christmas. We gave them to each other for Christmas. Now we're playing apart together, together apart uh, all the time. That's like the, VR, the a, VR thing? Yeah. Yes. I, I just want nothing person. more than I, – I honestly – I don't even want to play the Oculus. I just want to watch the two of you doing Oculus. That to me, oh, yeah. No, you that need to, to see Garth dance. Garth does this dance workout. 
But no, yeah, it's it's. I'll send you Come some on. video. I'll it's very you. white. I'm just gonna tell you right. Come now. on, listen. But I, that... I am pretty good at ping pong, so I'm just saying if you get one, we'll, we can play virtually. So. Yeah, you can play here in ping pong. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. Oh, is that right? Yeah. All right, we're playing some ping pong. That's right. that's the deal. Cool. You guys, happy New Year! Thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you for being part of this. It's a big deal for everyone involved and for. And for me and just everyone watching, we do, I really appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I know it's great for our Feed Thy Neighbor. And uh, I appreciate you being willing to be on with me. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Thank, thank, thank you, you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Love you, Papa. See you. All right. See Happy you guys. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. Wow. Well, that was me uh, being a bit of a, a fangirl. God, I love both of them good people solid solid people that was happy birthday nail creations by maria someone just asked me to wish them happy birthday okay listen we're into our our, our last uh, guest and then i've got a little video after that but we're running a little behind so if we get kicked off we're just going to jump on i hope we don't get kicked off they'd be idiots to kick us off now because our final guest is a big one he's a fellow avenger He's an Oscar and Emmy nominee, a producer, CEO of Stark Industries. Oh, I don't think that's a real company, but damn, he's played some iconic roles. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Doolittle, uh, that, that tiny role of, uh, I believe it was Iron Man. I'm going to ask for him to join me right now and... Uh, Listen, there's nobody who can make glasses look as cool as this guy. Please welcome the one and only Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> First of all, I need that pillow in my life. Wow, that's good. Hello, brother. Hey, buddy. What a night it's been. What a night. It's been an amazing night. My gosh. 1,200 extra donations through the course of the last uh, little bit. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. What are you talking about? I live for this stuff. And by the way, the fact that you're doing this on New Year's Eve, it just speaks to you and your character, Feed Thy Neighbor. It's This is what, I mean, charity starts at home, man, you know? So yep. I am so on board, and I got your back, back, back as usual, my dear friend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So what, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing for um, 2021? What have you been doing to ring in the new year? Well, you know, interestingly enough today, because there was some uh, speculation about, you know, oftentimes people have these these uh, foundations or they do uh, philanthropic stuff. You just want to make sure that the money's going where it's supposed to go. So I have a uh, an entire uh, forensics team that are doing a real time audit right now of your foundation and we're going to have the results in about uh i think five or seven minutes which is great and then you'll feel better and everyone will know so that you, you're doing a forensic audit on on feed that neighbor yeah on you really just on you that's so it's not funny no, no, no. It's not funny. That's cool. It's cool. I know. So 2020 has been a trying year. Silver lining has been more time spent at home and with loved ones. What are some of your bright spots from the bleak year? Oh, you want to get right past that. Okay. You must well, feel pretty confident. So for the just for the forensic team, um, yeah. you've got kind of like a, I appreciate you. I mean, it's you, 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 you're like, you'll have like a, you've got a are you breaking kind of a flop sweat right now? Here's what I've been doing. <laughs> One of I the would. things that got me through this year is Estes model rockets. We would do launches right. in the backyard. Yeah. And one of them, uh, and you, we talked about this before. You How, like yourself, like, uh, model rockets. One of them we angled at like 35, and it went and hit the neighbor's fence so fast. It didn't go up. It went sideways, and then it sparked a little bit. Oh, my God. That's, that's insane. Do you, think, do you think the forensic audit would get done like, like what's the what's the t what's your typical tur turnaround on that? Like by year end, are you done by year end? It's real time, and we'll have we'll have the results pretty soon. Yeah, but anyway, that rocket it hit the fence and it sparked, um, and uh, and that's what started the Malibu fire. 
When was this? How you've, you've been doing this? Hold three on years a darn right? second. You think it's funny to joke about that stuff? <laughs> Just because we had a good pre-interview doesn't mean the jokes are appropriate, Chris. You're right. You're right. It's not. It's not right to joke about this. <laughs> I love you. So Tell me about the Footprint Coalition. Um, the Footprint Coalition sounds like you're a hell of a guy. Yeah, I'm a hell of a guy. Here's what happened is this year, last year, I said I was going to do this um, coalition, a group of folks, scientists, inventors, entrepreneurs, uh, big business folks, and, and talk about scaling up green technologies to kind of heal our planet. If anybody hasn't seen David Attenborough's series, uh, it's on Netflix now, A Life on Earth. It is the most comprehensive, beautiful, conservationist um, the guy's whole life has been about this stuff. Um, so I'll be doing interviews with folks like that. We're doing some media. I'd love to uh, go out somewhere with you and talk about uh, conserving those wildlife areas and how to responsibly uh, hunt fish, do all that stuff. As a matter of fact, a lot of the great conservation uh, things are coming from that community, and I think they need to be recognized. I, I agree with you. I think that's really nice. Yeah. Um, I, 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 just to put this to bed, the audit, the, like when you are, <laughs> this is how you are working with you too. The great thing is there's no bit that you won't return to 35 times in the course of the shooting day. That's uh, I, I, saw, I saw people in the comments. They're like, is this real? Are they doing a bit? <laughs> there's no audit, right? <laughs> Right? No. Okay. Woo! Hey! It's, it's a bit. It's called a bit. Wait a minute. Here's what I was going to do. At the end, I was going to have some ticker tape thing come in and go, it turns out you came out of pocket for a Starbucks run and the foundation owes you 26 bucks. See, it was going to be sweet. Oh, boop, boop. you were going to end it with, you were going to end it. You, you don't I, happen you to have a music cue for me, do you? What? Those are the beach shorts that I did not get to wear because no one's traveling. <laughs> what can I tell you, brother? Guys, I want everybody to put hearts and hands and all kinds of stuff up for my friend, Robert Downey Jr. Yes, and by the way, I want you to see the future of this great nation. Come on in, y'all. All big fans of yours. Good job, everybody. Next year, can I be there? Come on in here, Fiona. Get in the frame. <laughs> there he is. There they are. Whoa! Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. All right. They've had their fun. Did. We love you tons. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, everybody. Hello, everybody at home. Have a great New Year's Eve. Ah. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I love you. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, pal. Bye-bye. Well, that was fun. That was Robert Downey Jr., ladies and gentlemen. And I, you know, I just got to say thank you all for joining me. Um, we've raised... A total of, let me get it, uh, my friend just sent me a text here with a total number, and it is uh, $613,000. That's great. I'm really, I'm really happy for that. Thank you for joining me for $613,000. Um, I, I, you know, there's, there's a, a group of people that have helped me here, so since we're here, I'm going to be, um, since I'm going to be uh, posting this, I want them to see it because I could not have done this without them. I did not do it alone. Uh, my family, I'll thank Catherine and I thank Jack and Lila. I've spent a lot of time on this over Christmas break and they lost me a little bit to it. So thank you for the patience. We're going to go have fun and ring in the New Year's together now. Uh, to Angie for motivating my sister, my brother, and my mom. Thank you guys. I think you're watching. I love you. Um, Allison Garman, my publicist, Mindy Weissman, who's my assistant, and Julie Garman is my um, manager. They all helped. My reps at Instagram, Facebook are Max 
Brabant and Blair Threat. My production team is Chris Pizzi, Mike Shoemaker. Thank you. Kat Spillane, the writers, Alex Bays, Matt Goldich, Mike Scollins. These are uh, from the Seth Meyer show. So grateful. Help me with that monologue. Thank you. Greater Good Charities team, Liz Baker. Thank you. Noah Horton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the entire team, including Marina, Hannah, Lexi, Ellie, Sean, Daphne, Denise, Rowena, Leslie, and Brooke. Um, and Ryan Cool who I went to high school with and whom I love very dearly, who linked this whole thing and started this whole thing up. He's with Greater Good and linked me to all these people and all the folks with Greater Good and The Hunger Site and 12 Tomatoes. Check those out. They are amazing. Um, the owners are Tim Coonan and Greg Hesterberg, uh, generously covering all the credit card processing fees and have also uh, donated to Match. So talking thousands and thousands in donations. And the entire team, including James, Rod, Cam, Colin, Doug, Aaron, Amber, Fletch, Jacob, Jessica, Keith, Jody, Leslie, Megan, Rachel, Stephen, Tony, Bramble, Mark Harris, and Mark Mellon for all the video work he did featured tonight. Uh, and then my good friend, my childhood friend, Alec Griffith as well, was part of this. Um, and then there's information for all the contest winners. I wasn't able to feature their video tonight because we ran a little long, but the top donor is Chris Fuller, and he donated $16,500. One donor. God bless you, Chris. You're doing Jesus' work. Low Country Food Bank uh, received a full $20,000 donation because of you. That's Low Country Food Bank. Uh, Trisha Meyer, Tri-City Free Breakfast Program. Uh, Colleen Raporto uh, gave their $10,000 donation to Kokomo Rescue Mission. So Tri-City Free Breakfast Program got a $10,000 donation. Francie Hakes from Atlanta Community Food Bank, 10000 uh, Krista Byers um, gave her, her $10,000 donation to Food Bank of North Alabama. And da Danielle Dianiakis, Dianiakis, I probably got that wrong, Dianiakis, Second Harvest Food Bank of Middle Tennessee. And then to the Lowe's, uh, Rob, your shorn chest has been a superstar behind me. Thank you for your wonderful house and for letting us do this here. Love you guys. Uh, thank you so much. And to everybody who, who donated, most importantly, to the 13,085 donations tonight and the other over 8,000 leading up to this, we have raised a lot of money. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I believe in, in Feed Thy Neighbor. I believe in our, the country that we live in, in America. I think what makes us strong is our community and our connections to one another. I think we can foster those connections and we don't need to rely on the government. We can rely on one another. So thank you. I love you. God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. Bye-bye.